Hi, I'm Cherokee Boos, and in this episode of How to Get Started in IT, I'll be sharing my certification exam study tips. When I was studying for my first certifications, I jumped into the deep end and I tried everything, like reading books, listening to books, watching videos, running labs, creating notes, and even a little borderline crazy person, I would take my notes in tape and pin them up to the walls, kind of like in some crime scene show, right? And all those tactics are great, but after some experience, I took a step back and refined my approach. When I get ready for a certification exam, the first thing I do is find the exam objectives, and I use that as a checklist. Now, every exam is going to have slightly different expectations, and in the past, a lot of exams incorporated definition-type questions, especially entry-level exams. But as you start to take more advanced or specialized exams, you'll find a lot of these questions are more performance-based. You'll see on the objective list topics like configure, deploy, install, implement, and well, you get the idea. So if you see any of these words, make sure you know how to perform that particular function. Ask yourself, do I know this term or definition? Do I understand this process, tool, or how this technology works? Or if it's performance-based, ask yourself, can I perform this task? If the answer is no, then you know exactly what you need to focus on and what labs you need to run through. Once you've made your way through all the exam objectives, you're ready for the practice exam. Test yourself the way you'll be tested. Follow that exam time frame. Learning and working through your labs, that's great. But you want to keep in mind that you're going to be under some sort of time constraint, so speed is of importance here. And one of the biggest mistakes that I see people make is going to be when they're using a study exam as a primary study tool. They wonder, how can I ace the study exam but then fail the actual exam so hard? So I want you to remember that this tool should be used sparingly to accurately gauge your readiness. You're not trying to simply memorize the questions because on these exams, the questions come in pools and you're not guaranteed any set of questions, especially not those sample questions. Okay, so now that I framed up what to study and how to test yourself, I wanna share three study methods that really worked for me. So let's go old school. And I'm taking it back to the old school because I'm an old school who's so cool. A technique that I keep going back to, well, because it works, is handwriting my notes and keeping them in a binder. In a day and age where more is better, research actually shows less is more in terms of handwriting versus typing notes. There's an interesting study conducted by Pam Mueller and Daniel Oppenheimer where the two postulate that taking notes by hand requires different types of cognitive processing compared to taking notes on a laptop. Although writing by hand is slower and more cumbersome than typing, it actually has a hidden benefit because they found students weren't able to write down every single word verbatim. Instead, they had to listen, digest, and summarize so that they can succinctly capture the essence of the information. And by making the brain process this information up front, they found students had a stronger conceptual understanding and were more successful in applying and integrating the material than those who used their laptops to take the notes. In fact, in Silicon Valley, tech capital of the world, there's a growing movement among their top tier schools to have tech-free classrooms. These are classrooms where students bring only pen, paper, and an open mind. A 2017 survey conducted by the Silicon Valley Community Foundation found among 907 Silicon Valley parents that in despite of the high confidence of technology's benefits, many parents now have serious concerns about tech's impact on kids' psychological and social development. Kids these days. We even see schools like Waldorf School of the Peninsula, which costs approximately $26,000 annually per student. They don't allow tablet or computer use for kids below the seventh grade. So we see these leaders of these tech companies foregoing their tech for their children. Interesting. The next tried and true technique that can't be beat when it comes to alphabet soup, all those delicious acronyms of tech, I'm talking about flashcards, perfect for rote memorization. They're super portable and can easily be used during downtime, like appointments, or maybe during your daily commute on the bus or train. Again, I go back to my theory of handwriting over digital here. You're going through the trouble of creating your own flashcards, and this is an important step of the process. 
because you can tailor those cards to omit areas in which you feel really solid about and then incorporate other areas where you need a little extra help. And don't just copy flashcards either. I can't tell you how many times I've seen incorrect information on websites with free flashcards. Use proper references, like the vendor issuing the exam. The last technique I want to highlight is mind maps. Taking this pen and paper idea even a step further. I think mind maps are a great way to organize your thoughts and concepts because you can incorporate things like symbols and drawings and color to help build those connections between these ideas. So by adding these visually stimulating details can help establish those neurological pathways. And I found that it helps me remember content more easily. So when you're preparing for a certification, don't get swept away. Start with the end in mind. Look at the objectives and the testing methods. Take advantage of practice tests and labs to help you really self-evaluate and experiment with different study techniques. And find the one that works for you. What are some of your favorite study techniques? What did work for you? Share in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe. Until next time, I'm Cherokee Boost.